Nash Equilibrium and Evolutionary Stable Strategy. Welcome. Um, we will um, talk now about very uh, two concepts that are very important uh, in this context. Uh, the references are um, a couple of chapters from Easley and Kleinberg and one chapter from Novak. So we are uh, getting used to the representation of uh, payoffs in a theoretical game uh, using the, a payoff matrix, which may be in one of these two forms, is a very good exercise for you uh, to be able to write one form from the other form. Uh, here we're representing two strategies denoted by the letter S and the letter T, and the payoffs are represented in a general form with values A, B, C, and D. Okay, so let's see. We are uh, I'm going to use this representation of payoffs to introduce some definitions. Okay, so here's the first definition of an equilibrium, specifically a Nash equilibrium, named after John Nash. Two players play a strategy that is a Nash equilibrium um, when they, it is not possible for them to deviate to move away from this strategy and increase their payoff. In other words, uh, in, in a sense, they are locked in. There is nothing else they can play other than this one strategy uh, with the ultimate goal of increasing their payoff. That is the main thing on these games, right? So remember, the game requires having players, having strategies that the players are going to play, and there are um, expected returns or payoffs. And that's what the players are going after, maximizing their payoff. So this idea of equilibrium comes from thinking that once you uh, play this strategy, there is absolutely nothing else that could be played that would increase payoffs. And in that sense, players are locked in. It's like being frozen, right? That's that uh, deadlock or something like that. So that idea of being frozen is what brings about this notion of uh, an equilibrium. Another way of phrasing Nash equilibrium is by referring to not one strategy, but referring to a pair of strategies. Say, for example, S and T. We say the pair is a Nash equilibrium if S is the best response to T and T is the best response to S. In other words, one strategy is the best response to another strategy, while another strategy is the best response to one, this one strategy, okay? So that's that's the idea of being um, in, in, in some type of locked in that lock uh, situation. So if players choose strategies that are best responses to each other, then no player has an incentive to deviate to an alternate uh, alternative strategy and the game is in an equilibrium state because there is no force pushing the game uh, towards a different outcome okay so this this kind of wraps up these these ideas of uh, being at equilibrium okay um, we had been using the word equilibrium as an uh, analogy for steady state uh, with differential equation models. Equilibrium is defined, is associated by the state in which there is no change. So with a differential equation model, an equilibrium is this one point at which the derivative equals zero, meaning that there is no change. Okay, Here, the idea of equilibrium is uh, summarized in um, with these words. The game is at equilibrium state because there is no other force that would push the game towards a different outcome. Now, we would say that using this general form of the payoff matrix, uh, the strategy S is a Nash equilibrium if A is greater than or equal to C. So here is the payoff of A. So A is the payoff obtained by a player uh, that is playing the strategy S yes, against another player and that's also playing the same strategy S yes, and each of these players would get the payoff of this uh, level of this value of A. Now, if that value is bigger, if this value is um, here, if this value A is bigger than little c, right, if A is bigger than C, then 
the payoff from plane S is uh, larger than the payoff um, from plane um, T against against S, right? So in that case, we would say that uh, that strategy S is a Nash equilibrium. Uh, if you um, have that is it is actually a strict inequality if is a is strictly bigger than c then you would call as a strict strict nash equilibrium we can also say the pair of strategies s comma s forms a nash equilibrium if a is greater than or equal to c Okay, so we can refer as one strategy being an equilibrium, or we can refer to a pair of strategies being an equilibrium, just as we mentioned when we are um, defining Nash equilibrium before. Now, uh, for this matrix or this matrix, we say that T, the other strategy, is a Nash equilibrium according to the values. Now we're going to compare the values. Now we're comparing the values of D and uh, B. Right, so we're gonna say that if D is greater than or equal to B, uh, then T is an Nash equilibrium, or uh, we can say that the pair T comma T is an Nash equilibrium if D is greater than or equal to B. We can also use the strict Nash, the definition of strict Nash equilibrium, which applies if you have a strict inequality. Now, consider a population of players that are playing strategy S, okay? And assume that there is a mutant of type T, uh, which is introduced into this large population of S players. So let's assume that there is an infinitesimal density. That's the idea, that this mutant, this mutant is introduced at a really tiny, tiny, small, it's an itty bitty small level of mutants uh, with with the um, strategy T uh, being introduced into the population. So it's an infinitesimal amount, which we denote here by epsilon. Okay, this epsilon is a number between zero and one, but is probably closer to zero than it is to one. That's the idea of being infinitesimal. So we would say that uh, things that are T that is uh, frequency epsilon of t players, the invaders, then the rest, right, is going to be 1 minus epsilon. Um, so clearly epsilon plus 1 minus epsilon equals 1. So we're going to say that there are epsilon of these players are t players and 1 minus epsilon are s players. So what we do now that we have um, this we multiply the matrix with the values of payoff okay by the vector with densities remember here the first quantity is density of s the second quantity is density of players in t when we carry out this matrix vector multiplication this is the first row times this column that gives you a minus a times quantity 1 minus epsilon plus b epsilon and the second entry you get c times quantity 1 minus epsilon plus d epsilon so this is now what we call the fitness vector this is we f1 and f2 okay this is from our previous calculations now the fitness of the s strategy um, is so we're looking at uh, again this re re represents the densities of players with S and T, which means that this will represent F1 or F sub S, the fitness of strategy S, right? So the fitness of strategy S is greater, meaning this quantity would be greater than the fitness of strategy T if um, the first value of fitness is greater than the second value of fitness. So if A is greater than C, then the fitness of S exceeds the fitness of T. If A is exactly equal to C and, so this goes together, A equals Z and B is strictly bigger than D, then the fitness, the fitness of S is greater than the fitness of T. 
So this um, then this, this this conditions brings us to a definition uh, of another quantity that's called evolutionary stable strategy. So we would say the strategy is, is evolutionary stable if either one of two conditions are met. Uh, one, either A is strictly bigger than C or A is equal to C and B is equal to D. If that happens, we say that S is an evolutionary stable strategy. The definition of um, this, this is also called ESS, Evolutionary Stable Strategy. This definition guarantees that selection will oppose the invasion of T into S. Okay? So let's consider this scenario. Um, we have, uh, this, this is the example uh, that we have been dissecting, using it for uh, several different instances. So let's go back to the example of the body size in the population of beetles. There, there were two strategies. One, they were phenotypes, small and large. So if a few large beetles are introduced into a population of small beetles, then the large beetles will do extremely well. Remember that here the body size was a main driving factor in the competitions uh, for food. The food competitions, these were pairwise competitions. Two beetles meeting each other, the bigger guy uh, kind of had a better chance of keeping most of the food or something, right? So um, what happens, We let's, let's examine that in the context of invasion, right? In the context of um, evolutionary um, stability. So since they rarely meet each other, then they get most of the food in almost every competition they experience, right? So we're, we're talking about uh, the large beetles, right? When large meets large, then um, there is a significantly smaller payoff as what they get out of those uh, nutrients of food, right? Significantly smaller when compared to when large meets small, right? So <clears throat> since large doesn't meet large that often um, so they have they have an evolutionary advantage the population of small beetle small beetles cannot drive out the large size beetles so the strategy small is not evolutionary stable okay strategy small is not evolutionary stable from the strategy payoff matrix what we have here we have that five this entry is less than this entry, okay, which uh, violates the definition of evolutionary stable strategy. So this does not satisfy the definition of evolutionary stable strategy. Now consider the following payoff matrix, right? Uh, in this case, so. Uh, what is different? The values here, small against small is 5, large against large is 3. Let's see here, large against large is still 3, small against small is still 5. So these values are the same values, but now um, I'm sorting the strategies here on a different order. I list large first, small second, large first, small second. I want to do that just to show you something that is consistent with the way in which we listed the definitions. If we now consider the payoff matrix in this form, same values, but we rearranged the order of the strategies were consistent, right? This strategy goes first here, this strategy goes second, and then across the columns, we keep that we are consistent with the order. This strategy goes first, this strategy goes second, okay? So clearly here, three is bigger than one. And that implies that the definition of evolutionary stable strategy applies in this sense. So strategy large is evolutionary stable. Let's digest this. In other words, in a population of large beetles, a few small beetles will do... Um, will do very badly, okay? So in a population of large beetles, now we think of the majority of the population having the phenotype of large body size. If we introduce an infinitesimal, an infinitesimal amount of beetles with small body size, then those small beetles are gonna do terrible, 
um, they will have a clear disadvantage in uh, food competitions, right? And um, they um, they're gonna be losing almost every competition for food because of their body size. The population of large beetles resists the invasion, resists the invasion of uh, small beetles uh, because the large phenotype is considered an evolutionary stable strategy. So given a matrix of this form with values a, b, c, and d, we say that a pair s comma s is a Nash uh, is a Nash equilibrium when s is the best response to the choice of S by the other player. Uh, we can also equivalently state that S comma S is a Nash equilibrium uh, if A is strictly bigger than, I mean, if A is greater than or equal to C. So you're comparing the payoffs on here in the first column, right? That's what we have been working with. Um, we can also say that um, that this is an evolutionary stable strategy if A is strictly bigger than C or if A is equal to C and B, this, these two things can be the same uh, and you have that B is strictly bigger than D. So if a strategy is evolutionary stable, then S, if a strategy S is evolutionary stable, then the pair of strategies S comma S is a Nash equilibrium. And this concludes our discussion on the concepts of Nash equilibrium and evolutionary stable strategies. Thank you.